So, basically today, I'm going to be making an edit for my Instagram, but instead of making it a speed up, like the last 15 speed up videos on my YouTube channel, basically I'm going to be speeding up parts that don't need to be seen, and practically making a tutorial speed up. Half of it will be sped up so that obviously the unnecessary things aren't making the video longer. Um, and all the hidden kind of details that I don't know if people actually see, like how I do lighting, how I do shadows. I was asked if I would ever make tutorials and I thought this post, just before obviously the end of 2019, I was going to basically talk through what I kind of use, what I do, different parts of Photoshop, you know, different kind of things and hope that people take something from it and can advance their knowledge as well and maybe try new things with their edits and obviously I've taught myself all of this and now I'm just kind of giving out information. I don't know how long this video is going to be, I'm going to try and make it as short as possible so that it's loads of knowledge compact into one video for you to all to understand. Um, and I just hope, obviously, you pick something up. There's, um, basically, I'll be using some, obviously, lighting techniques. I'll be using, like, some of Photoshop's features to make, obviously, my new edit which is going to be this Kai Havertz. I'm basically going to be making an edit on him um, just because of how insane he is or how big his name is right now. Um, I don't know where to begin. Uh, so what I do normally is I would go on to Google. I would put in get images I would search for the person and then I would open Photoshop normally I'd click new and then put in here 3000 by 3000 I know Instagram and some designers use 1000 by 1000 um, but I use 3000 by 3000 it's just personal preference and then what I do is I paste the photo that I found actually I need to show how this one of uh, Virgil van Dijk I recently used in a collaboration edit and the speed art is on YouTube if basically you find the photo you pull up this menu which is the opposite to the opposite click was it right click that's the one um, if you right click the photo go to inspect element and it will basically take you a highlight in blue if you find what looks like a link and double click it now basically it'll be this so you copy this link you can then close this open a new tab and paste and go here this will take you to a full um, image and then once again right click and save the picture to obviously desktop or on your computer um, obviously you still need to remove the watermark and stuff um, obviously that's it's obviously if you know how then it's easy um, after you remove the watermark I tend to kind of I like to keep an original and then make also a edit folder so that everything you use and add to the images in one folder because you can see the difference so you can hide the whole folder and see what you started with and it sometimes makes it kind of you can it it makes you see it a bit better. Um, so I've titled it edited and original. So the one out of the folder is the image I started with. Uh, in the edited, I've removed the get image watermark and the render. Uh, that's just a copy of the edited image, but the render is cutting around the subject. Um, obviously, I don't need this bit to be in the video so I'll probably speed this up so you um, so you don't have to sit and wait um, so I'll be I'll quickly cut this out and then I'll be right back
Ugh. Jesus. That took way too fucking long. So, basically after you select round the subject, player, person, you, well, obviously, I use a pen tool because I feel like it's easier. If you do use the pen tool as well, then you right click, make selection, click OK, and obviously make sure you just select the render layer and click this little icon down here next to the effects and basically that will put it in a layer mask and if you then hide the edited image underneath that layer you'll see the actual render um another thing i like to do is above everything but so it's still in the edit folder is make a duplicates folder i made this mistake I made this mistake a lot when obviously it, I think it was one major mistake I done and I didn't have duplicates of the kind of layers and then I had to restart the whole edit and it really kind of annoyed me. Um, you hide the folder and then pretty much you copy both and then hide and just throw them in there. That way, if you ever mess up, you can go back on that and do that do that a few times because that folder remains hidden anyway, so that's not going to affect it. But if you do that a few times to make sure you got backups of the layers that, you know, you've made. Um, after that, uh, make sh after making sure I've got a duplicate of it, I will go to render, convert to smart object, and then rasterize the layer. And pretty much that just makes it a normal image layer as if you'd got it off of some, somewhere like footy renders. Um, then if you copy that render layer and put it underneath and then hide it, you can then work with this layer. Oh, this is just, I think I maybe over protect, kind of overdo things. Um, but you don't need to keep this layer as long as you don't mess up. So I've got a plugin for um, Photoshop uh, Camera Raw and I use Topaz Labs as well. If you make sure you select the render layer and go through Camera Raw, basically this is like a, it's kind of like a mini Lightroom. It's like a plugin um, and it lets you kind of mess with it. I like to add exposure because it brightens up a bit. So maybe Go by what your gut's telling yourself, obviously, if it looks too bright, lower it a bit. Um, and obviously, if you've got copies, then you can, you know, start again. Uh, I also like to add the texture and the clarity to it because it gives it a bit of a shadow. It, it makes it look a bit better. And then you click OK, it'll apply it. And then if you enable the copy and then keep hiding the one above it, you can see the difference it makes which if you're happy with that one then you can delete the coffee because you've already got one in the duplicates so that's that's kind of that's the render done obviously ask any designer cutting out anything is always the most annoying part of it but after you've got a copy everything else is just kind of easy um, Try to think what else to do to this. A lot of the time, I like to add some like color to the background, but with this one, I just want to keep it clean. Um, so maybe move on to color correction. If you make another folder with this icon down here and just put CC on this because that's short for color correction, uh, brightness and contrast, if you put that in add some brightness to it obviously mess around with the sense because obviously I can give you exact sense to make it look perfect because it's whatever you create add a bit of contrast don't add too much of one setting because you sometimes over editing something kind of just makes it a kind of makes it look weird um, also add a little bit of saturation like I said, it's not too much of everything. And then if you close that whole folder, and pretty much, obviously, again, if you hide and then unhide the whole folder, then you'll see the effect it has on what you started with. So I'm going to keep it like that. Um, 
Then you need to make, obviously, if it's a FIFA based edit, then you need to make a FIFA card. Uh, I bought a... I bought a FIFA 20 card template from Legacy FIFA, that's it. I keep a note on who I get things from and then credit them when I post. Um, you go and basically pick, obviously, I, I can, now you know who it's from, you can kind of go and purchase it, but most people watching this probably have FIFA cards to kind of use. And if you are a mobile designer, I strongly suggest that you move to obviously things like Photoshop because you can do so much more um, then you need you need you need you need foot width or foot head this is what I like to go on because Kai Havertz is a big he's a big I say he's a big player his name is very um, it's talked about a lot so this is pretty much foot width's career mode for players so he's currently an over 84 overall his potential is 92 I often use this site for kind of upgrades if a player was to receive an upgrade you could make the FIFA card then obviously after so if I open up a separate one uh, let's open up foothead as well and basically if you search for his current card you can kind of see stats obviously you still need to find his face to put on the card because you're making his card again um kai havertz he is an 84 cam so if you see here 84 cam you basically copy these stats um so i'm gonna move this over to the other screen quickly copy stats that he's got apart from this one this one his potential was 92 so put 92 in there, change his position to Cam, put his name in, uh, what's his pace, his current pace is 84, shooting 78, passing 79, and then you basically copy the stats that he's got, obviously the potential that you'll find on Footwiz. Obviously I like to use that because, you know, it's accurate. Um, obviously you will get comments, don't worry about the people that comment, like, or too high or whatever, because you'll always get, there's not one single post you'll have that won't have any negative comments, there's always somebody. Um, so that's what stats copied, if we go to here we see he's a 92. Normally what I like to do is see the difference between his current overall to his potential which is 8 I think. 84. 8. Oh god. Um, yeah 8. And then add that 8 to every stat that he's currently got. But I'm probably gonna uh, to add 8 to this though, it'd be 92. Um, 78 at 8 is 86, I think. Yeah, um, 79, 87. It'd be 92 again over here. I think I might put his. I might add one extra to this because I don't I don't I often don't like seeing two stats the same. Obviously pace and dribbling. Um 44 add eight fucking hell, this is really testing my math. Ninety two? What? No, fifty two. We're gonna say ninety two for a cam. Um and sixty five add eight. Obviously, you could use a calculator, but... <laughs> 73. So, this would be his upgraded card stats. And, obviously, with the rating. You'd also then look at his current club. Obviously, I'm looking at this. This isn't a club swap. This isn't changing his club. This is just an upgrade. Um, you often keep up with stuff like 
football news then you'll know obviously this PSD does not have his club so you'd go and find um, his club there we go so you'd pretty sure that's the right one move it over to here yeah this one because oh wait no 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 you'd move it over to the PSB some obviously this one has a PSB which is an extension kind of file um well, stuff like this save that there and close that and then it'll be obviously copied on here I assume that is the right logo and I'm not just being stupid yeah it looks like it um, so we can close that we've got the new stats with the rating um, just make sure everything's a okay size just make sure you save Obviously to access stuff like this you need to double click them. Some PSB some PSDs will have this, some others won't. Um, what I like to do with the flags a lot is um go to blending options and in a glow. This kinda adds a depth. So if you see here, you can see there's already a glow on it. Like that you can obviously do that. And then you could also make a new layer above that and create a clipping mask. So anything that's projected onto that layer will only be caught on with that kind of flag. So what you want to do is make sure you got a right size brush and kind of add a little light above it and then save. And basically there it is there, you'll see that this you'll still see the light um, and then all you need after that is the face which will be in there so you need to try and find the best quality face to put on the card so we don't need this shitty low quality face um, because there is one we can actually use here on Getty, so if I quickly delete this um, and show here, so you look for the best quality face. Obviously, this involves more cutting out, but for the sake of editing, it's kind of worth it. So let me copy that link again, paste it in a new tab, and then save it. All you need to do is kind of crop the photo because obviously the Getty images watermark will won't really be seen because you only need a certain amount of the face of the card um, I'm gonna save it as Kai Habits face uh, file open desktop see so we can delete that open this one you get the crop you clear ratio and then you pull this up past the get images watermark that's if you actually find an image of a face for it pretty much having it this far you only need a certain amount of the face anyway so if it's locked double click it and click ok and it'll be unlocked and then you can proceed obviously once again cutting out which like I said no designer really likes but it's something we kind of have to do uh, so it's pen tool I use you just quickly go over it for the card's sake the rest, the rest, the rest. There we go. Select again and click that little icon down there, put it on full screen. That actually looks really good compared to a lot of it. 
that is, I'd say, one of the best kind of faces I've actually cut out, revolving obviously around his hair because he's got a bit of a quiff. So, the only thing we can really do, let me just copy that in case I fuck it up. You click on this one and then put on a brush. You need a little bit of kind of strength on it so that it's not too light. And then kind of lower the size. Do this, kind of cut around it a bit. Make it a little bit more realistic. Um, just kind of freshen it up a bit. I feel like a barber some of the time instead of a designer, just cutting people's hair. No, as revolving around obviously this year for Devil Foot, it's kind of been, it's been tough. I, I could have posted a lot more than I have. Obviously, stuff happens in my personal life where, obviously, I don't feel up to editing or you know, sometimes the, how you feel. But obviously, I've kind of put this year kind of behind me. I don't want to remember it. I don't, it was definitely a downfall. Um, and hopefully 2020 is going to be a lot better. Right, so convert smart object and rasterize again. See, and if you just want to kind of, I don't think you can really see it because it's hair, but still, you drag this across to your card PSD. There we go, make it bigger, put it about there. Make sure there's no line. Obviously, this PSD is a really good one, that's why I bought it. Um, I uh, put it on the card and obviously it's a, it doesn't go over the top but if it did then you would need to cut it um, and then add some effects to brighten up his face so the same thing we were in before filter, camera raw uh, add some exposure a little bit of that a little bit of that Click OK. See, it looks better. And then filter Topaz Labs. I use this a lot for obviously detail. So obviously detail boost. It's default set at one. So if you add this a little bit and look closely, you see it adds a bit of detail. You hold on it. You can see obviously the detail it adds. Uh, and add a little bit more brightness on the adaptive exposure. There you go. Click OK. There we go. See, now that looks a lot better than what the one we we're going to take from Foothead because it's not blurry, it's clean. Obviously, it took a little bit more effort cutting it out and all that. Um, but if you want to deliver the best you can, make it obviously because we've got a good image to start with. Obviously, you look at the edit and we turn the original on, the whole thing looks better in itself already. You want a top quality card. Uh, see, we don't need this open. If, try and save kind of all of this. So if you've already got, you can see the difference how one, how small that is and how kind of blurry it is compared to that one. And then after we brighten it up. So if we, we can close these now because obviously we've got card. Um, so if we hide that and then save. This is this is the card I always use, like the card template from Legacy FIFA. Uh, desktop, PNG, and just pretty much save this. Potential card. Uh, save it to PNG to desktop. I save everything on my desktop, and then when I finish the edit, I save the PSD and the actual edit itself. I folder it all up. Every edit I've ever done for Devil Foot, every edit at all, anything I make, I save and folder up because having the PSD to go back on really helps. And then this is kind of where it's a little bit difficult. Um, you got to find a kind of position for it. Because we have a render, we can put it behind the render and also it needs to be under the CC folder so that it has the same effects. 
Um, I'm just gonna. I like to keep, obviously, some designers, the panels and the layer kind of. They don't name them. They don't organize them. I don't know. It's just kind of OCD. Um, to put it under CC, it actually does quite a lot to it. I mean, some people like that. Uh, we could also put it under the render. Obviously, if we were to kind of add a bit of perspective to the card. Um, perspective's never been, like, my strong point. You know, it's never something I've been good at. Um, I mean, we could sit it there. Obviously, this is where I don't know what I'm doing with the edit. But that's the whole point of coming up with ideas, new styles. Um, I try to think about what to do. You go to blender options on the render, and to add a bit more effect, lighting, example, um, inner glow. Again, put it on overlay and make it white. I mean, it's up to you how strong that is. Don't make it obvious strong. So, like, obviously, mess with the size, mess with the range. Obviously, the range is quite. I don't want it to be like this, too blocky. You kind of want it to be smooth, and then obviously. So, I'd say, obviously you can turn the layer off, so that brightens them up a bit, and then same with the outer glow, if you give them an outer glow, don't make it too much, um, see that looks very obvious to me, um, Maybe something like that. I mean, you don't need to add an outer glow. I'm not going to add an outer glow because it kind of ruins it personally. But still, having the inner glow already kind of changes that kind of effect. It is still kind of bright around his nose. So I'm going to put the opacity down a little bit. See? And then I'm going to save that. I also like to add the same uh, inner glow and outer glow to the card. Obviously, don't do it so that you lose the kind of gold effect. Uh, so I'd say, maybe, what, that, range, you want a little bit of range, and kind of do this, you can see the difference in it, um, I, oh yeah, 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 I know it, um, so here, under the CC folder, but above the render, if you add light, make sure it's a white brush, and it's a soft brush, so no hardness, and it's fairly sized for like the top of the edit, so like that. If you click it, and basically place the brush above his head, like that, and then zoom back in. Like that, and then basically, if you obviously once again, this is something I do a lot is kind of hide it and unhide it to see what it looks like. This personally, I think, looks really good with the light, so obviously, I'd keep that there. Um, if we do a brush, I've got a specific brush I like to use for FIFA 20 edits. I've been obviously doing different, obviously, FIFA edits for. A few years now. Um, FIFA 20. This is the main brush I use. Obviously, even having this in there, I just kind of have it behind the card. Obviously, because the color of Kai's kit, you can see how it kind of blends a little bit. Um, trying to. Uh, Obviously, you want to have it as detailed as possible. Obviously, the the whole effect of having the card above the brush, but behind the player's render, really, obviously, gives out a lot in itself. The brush, I'm trying to just kind of adjust it. Um, if you can, if you, obviously, some people like to change the color of the brush. If you don't know how, then basically make a copy in case you don't like it and you want to go back to just a few of 20 colors. Um, make a folder and put the brush 
the copied one in it. Um, then if you, because it's in a folder, it's different. Hue and saturation, it basically hides the layers. Create a clipping mask to the brush. And then turn down the saturation. You could put the brush layer on overlay. And that's how I do this effect. And personally, it's one of my kind of most used. Um, or you could put it on multiply, I think it is. I think you put that on multiply and then you add a layer above that and also put that in a clipping mask. So that layer one isn't clipping to the hue and saturation layer, it's clipping to the brush, it just goes right through. So if there's a clip layer, it just is clipping layers onto the brush, it's not clipping onto the one that's underneath it. Um, so this will be, if you want it to be gold, then this will be the gold colour. So I'm gonna obviously because I need my I keep my layers organized. This will be gold. So what you want to do is make sure you select this layer. Uh, go to the color picker. You pick on the kind of the card I'd say, and kind of pick the color you want the brush behind to be. So I'm gonna say that one there because that's in a clipping mask. It's only gonna paint on the brush. If it's not in a clipping mask, then it's gonna let you freely paint all over it. Um, so you're going to want to pretty much light it up. It looks weirder now, but obviously after adjusting settings and stuff, it'll look a bit better. Um, I don't know if you have the brush on anything. No, you don't. Keep the brush on normal and maybe put the gold color on multiply. There we go, see? So I kind of got confused there. You don't put the brush layer on that unless it's overlay and you want that same effect that I kind of do. Make a new layer above that gold color, call it overlay, and then clip it again. Make sure it's white, make sure it's on overlay mode, and make sure obviously, because gold is, you want it to stand out, you don't want it to look like this. And uh, just kinda. It will look kinda weird. Obviously, that's why I hardly use this. You can lower the opacity on things. So obviously lowering the opacity from 100. And then in the middle of these layers, I'm gonna add a new layer. Not so that it's in the folder. Call it shadow. And then make it black. You don't do it so it stands out too much, but you make a, that layer. So that it's underneath the card but above the brush and if you just kind of you know go down the sides of the card and the corners like that it adds a lot of depth to it obviously you can again once again mess with the opacity like obviously you don't want it being too much so maybe putting it on 70. That already kind of pulls out the card. And it's obviously different from the brush. Um, I mean, I might not even use this. Obviously, I know sitting and explaining it is taking time. But sometimes you get to use up time and it, in the end you might, even not, you might not even like what you've made. So if I put on the other brush and then hide this one, the shadow still remains and that still looks good on top of that brush. It still kind of pulls the card out of the screen. Um, the other the other parts of it is vibrant. You know, compared to what we started with, obviously maybe it's a good idea, maybe other people prefer it as well, but the gold one isn't the best option. Basic FIFA colours make it look better as it is. Obviously, look at how dull it was to what we've made it. And then selecting the main parts of it, like original, edited, that brush, that shadow, that card, and the render. And then 
also the light and just moving the edit over so that if the right side's a problem and there's too much to it you kind of pull the edit more to the center so that it's even I mean you may see more of the image like the edited and obviously we remove the getty image kind of watermark if we just remove it again in this edited one I'm just gonna select here if you didn't know about obviously removing it you just select what the image kind of if the image if this image has got a get image watermark on it you select around it you then click fill and content aware make sure the layer selected on this image obviously sometimes it won't even do it that just means you need to get this thing over here clone stamp hold alt down and then click somewhere on the image and just keep clicking so for example here just click there alt hold it click it and then there same here you get the point so if you look out from a distance you never know it was really there sometimes it can look kind of weird though it depends who you are it might not annoy you Fill that up a bit. Maybe something like that. Then if you obviously close the edit and think if this is anything else. Just kind of look at what it was to what it is now. Maybe you'd want to remove something or you'd want to move something so for example obviously after moving moving the whole image and everything you've done to one side a bit more and obviously removing what was in the photo card render wait no don't remember the card and the shadow and the brush not that brush though this brush the one that's visible you can maybe move it over a little bit so that it's, you know, more out of the picture. And then, we maybe move the brush back this way a little bit. Personally, I think that's okay. The shadow's still there. Um, before, after, before, after. If you see, obviously, I'll leave a couple of examples of what I'm talking about on screen at the minute. There's certain edits that I do where you can see quite a lot of the player and I'd kind of cut them out, completely black out the background. I'll even leave a little kind of preview of the last speed art I've done that I uploaded yesterday. Um, that had me kind of make everything black and white behind them and add a colour using the multiply overlay feature that's found in here and the overlay um, when I was kind of putting white down and it kind of brightened them up a bit um, obviously this this is simple obviously I've brightened up the photo it looks kind of good it's a new card obviously that's a lot of the reason why is basically the FIFA side of things in the image I think this is done I'm like 90% confident that it's done. There's just one thing that's missing and that's obviously your watermark. So obviously it's, you can hide one, you can, you know, make one. So if I do at Devilfoot, which I do quite some of the time, or if I, my logo that I use, um, I could use that. Basically what I like to do is um, make it a certain size make sure it's not too far apart and then go over here click on here and make it overlay whilst it's white if it's any other color I don't know what it'll do but you might as well have it white um, and then move it down under the light under the light layer and then move it to where you want it so
Hmm. This is sometimes the most difficult bit as well. Maybe leave it there. I'll put it behind his head. You don't need to have it bold. And make it medium metallic. But sometimes you want it to be seen. To make it medium metallic, you might need it a bit more um, smaller. Nah, I'm gonna keep it bold. Bold italic, and then obviously place it. I think that's quite good. Um, now a tip that I was taught by two people, if I remember rightly, it was Grafifa, which is Josh, I think his name is, and Aquafoot. They taught me that, obviously, selecting the top layer and kind of pulling it down. Obviously, if you have it like this, then it's easy. But pretty much, if you were to select this layer at the very top here and go down to the very bottom and hold shift and click on the bottom one it'll select them all obviously I don't need to do that I can just click on here click shift and hold that one you right click well actually before I do that make sure you save it file save as I'm gonna save it on desktop I'm gonna call it okay have it edit all potential Player edit. Um, save. So if you save it first, do not save it after I show you what I'm about to show you, because you'll not have a PSD to go back on unless you don't actually save the PSDs. You click here after it's saved. Click shift. Click the other one. Um, merge them. Click this. Well, they pass it to 99. File, export, save for web legacy. Save, desktop, and then obviously save it as that. So basically that saves it at the, its best quality. Do not click file, save to the PSD after you do that, because everything you had is now kind of merged. All you need to do is kind of shut it do not save and then when you go back and open it it's on your desktop it'll pretty much be all where it was so do not save it after you merge it i cannot stress that enough if you obviously close everything else as well one thing i like to do is reopen the edit the, the actual image double click on this so it's unlocked copy so that you've got a spare to look back on and kind of mess with the camera raw and topaz slabs settings one more time um, and that pretty much just adds finishing touches so obviously if you want to add a little bit more exposure it doesn't need to be too much because the amount you added already texture and clarity see it just kind of you can kind of see what it does click ok there you go brightened up a little bit more again so if you want to do this again you can see the difference um, after you maybe add camera raw, sometimes depending on the edit, I will copy the camera raw version, uh, top ass labs, and kind of do remember that you need to click reset if you haven't closed Photoshop since you've done it to the face on the card. Um, detail, and just you know, add the detail. Obviously, it's default is like 1.0 it's been up it's been put up 0.11 and if we maybe put the exposure up a little bit more oh, brightness there we go click ok that's on top of the other effect the um the camera raw effect so obviously this is the camera raw effect so this is what you started with this is the camera raw effect and then this one above this layer after I hit the camera raw effect is the camera raw and top pass effect. So what you can do is um, yeah, obviously you see the difference there, the camera raw versus that one. If you can if you if that's too much then you can kinda lower the opacity on this one. So I'm gonna maybe put it at 50 so that you still get some of the top pass effects. See even just the subtle difference like that. 
and then after that you can merge these layers one more time you don't need to save this one uh, set as a PSD merge all those layers 99% export save for web legacy save desktop and then don't you don't need to over kind of overwrite that one I normally just put a dash the way it's kind of already saved that and then put it as final as in obviously it's the final version so you're not going to do any more to this and if you close photoshop completely you'll see you've got all your files you used obviously you need to organize them obviously I'm, i mean you might not even save the files i'd save them um so here's your two this is the one you saved before you edited it one more time and if i open this one So you can kind of see the difference. I'm not gonna. You, you probably won't see this edit until tomorrow, because I'll probably post it on Instagram tomorrow, then upload this video for you to see it. I don't know how long this is gonna be because this is already an hour and a half long. Oh, lucky me! I get to go and edit this. Um, you'll see this edit, and obviously, it'll do well. Hopefully, on Instagram. Um, a lot of my edits that I post recently have been doing well. Obviously, I can't obviously thank everybody enough, but despite how much I've been inactive, obviously next year's going to be a different year. I'm going to be a lot more active on YouTube. Obviously, this is actually my first tutorial I've done. I stream on Twitch. Um, I stream games. I play Call of Duty. I play Fortnite. I'm not actually live design like live stream me designing on twitch yet i don't know if that's what people want to see but i have played games i'll try and get a preview for the video like uh me playing i play with a uh, family friend and i play fortnite sometimes if you want to see more videos then comment below if you want to see more tutorials specify what you want me to kind of do specify what you want me to show you because practically showed you how I design everything I look at pretty much in depth so this is going to be a pretty long video to upload and other than that you know I hope you have a great new year if I don't post to YouTube again before that um, and yeah peace